Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and today I'm going to show you how to install a second hard drive and access your RAM in the Acer Predator Helios 300. Uh, this is a fairly easy process compared to the VX15, unless you want to get to the fans to clean them, or you want to have access to your M.2 drive. Um, you only have to remove two screws to actually access your second hard drive bay and your RAM. So they make it a little bit easier, uh, but not much if you want to access that M.2 slot. And I'll get into that. At the end of the video, I'll do a total teardown. It takes about two or three minutes where you guys can check that out. Uh, I'm going to use a Phillips Zero screwdriver here, and you're going to remove the screw to the hard drive bay. And it's a very simple and easy process. One screw, just get a fingernail in there and pull up the door, and now you actually have access to your secondary hard drive bay. Yes, they do include the mounting hardware, uh, unlike when they launched the VX15 where you had to actually request it. Uh, they are including the caddy uh, and everything. Uh, they also have four screws uh, that not only hold this in, but they give you four screws to actually add a hard drive in as well. And that comes in that accessories box that has your power supply in it. So let me get these screws out really quickly, and then I'll show you uh, very quickly how to uh, add a hard drive, uh, and then uh, also if you want to upgrade the RAM or uh, you know maybe replace that 16 gigabytes with 32 gigabytes. Super easy process to do that. So once we get the four screws out here, uh, you're going to want to pull this little sleeve out, and that's really all it is. It's kind of like a uh, very thin metal sleeve that kind of holds your uh, hard drive in place and then you have your SATA connector here that will be taped down to the bottom of the laptop and that will go back to your main board. So you can just untape it and then you can just push the tape down it won't matter uh, and there's your SATA connection. Uh, so what you are going to have to do is get the four screws out of the box and I happen to have a Seagate 2 terabyte Fire CUDA. This is an SSHD drive. I use this to hold games that people want me to review and do other things with, so that's what we'll be installing today. Of course, you're going to want to line this up with the way that it is set. So you're going to uh, want to have the smaller side of the SATA connection on the right-hand side. Uh, and then you're going to see it just kind of fits over the holes on the sides of the drive and then you're just going to want to rescrew uh, those four screws in but again uh, in this box that they give you the accessories box that has your power supply in it they actually have a small bag with four more screws in it so don't uh, feel like uh, you maybe have missed it or something like that because it is in there and it is very small but these are just four little screws that you'll screw into the side of your hard drive so that you can have it mounted and in place. So I'm going to fast forward through this bit. Uh, you're going to take these screws, screw over this caddy together and then screw it back down into the main board uh, and then you'll be good to go. Okay, so now that you have everything screwed into the sides of the caddy, just needs to be reseated into the laptop after the SATA connection is made. So it is that simple to just hook up your uh, secondary drive in your drive bay, uh, no problems. They give you all the hardware to do it, so you don't have to worry about uh, you know filling out a form with Acer like the VX15 uh, and getting them to send you one. It comes pre-installed in the drive bay uh, for you to go and it's just that easy to do it uh, obviously I put a hard drive in you can do it's the same steps for a, a SSD as well um, as long as you uh, just be careful with everything and go slow it's a super easy process it takes all of about you know 10 to 15 minutes to do so there you go and you're all set at this point it is all set in and ready to go so you can just put your door back on and then screw your screw back in and you are good to go on your hard drive upgrade now as far as getting into the other uh, drive um, 
the M.2 drive. Again, I will cover that at the end of the video. Uh, let's take a look real quickly at the RAM slots here. So if you do want to take out the two 8 gigabyte Kingston RAM, you can do that and you can put in two 16s. It will support up to 32 gigabytes. So again, it's just remove one screw and then pull up and there is your RAM slots. So very easy and simple to get into. Uh, if you're just upgrading RAM, uh, there's just tabs on the sides if you've never done this before, uh, little metal tabs and you'll just pull those to the side and it'll pop up at an angle like that. Uh, pretty much uh, all you have to do then is just pull it straight out and there is your eight gigabyte Kingston stick and there's one underneath it and it is the same process as well to remove that one. So if you're gonna replace this with 32, you would just buy uh, two 16 gigabyte sticks and you would put those in uh, and they would then be running in dual channel like these two eight gigabyte sticks are. Putting it back in, you just wanna make sure that it's at a 45 degree angle and then you just push it down until the clips clip in on the sides and you're good to go. So very easy and simple to do RAM. I know a lot of you have done it before, uh, but there are people that watch my videos that haven't, so I just put that in there uh, to make sure they know uh, how to do it if they need to. Now, if you need to get in to the rest of the laptop, you are going to have to remove 16 screws around the entire laptop. The same thing that we had to do with the VX15 to get the entire back off of it. The reason for that being is if you ever wanna clean the fans uh, and or get to your M.2 drive, which is on the right side of the RAM slot that we just accessed, uh, you have to remove the bottom of the laptop. And I will show you how to do that in just a second. Let me screw this back in, I'll be right back. Okay, so if you want to actually access uh, the other components that are underneath the bottom panel, you're going to maybe your fans on the left or the M.2 drive that's along the right hand side uh, next to this RAM slot, you're going to have to remove all the screws off the bottom of the laptop and pull the bottom off just like you did with the VX15. So, 16 screws all around the entire laptop. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you even remove any of the screws is if you have a secondary drive installed on this system, remove it beforehand because the drive caddy is actually connected to the bottom of the laptop and the SATA drive or the SATA connector is connected to the main board of the laptop. So if you try to unscrew everything and you pull up on it, you'll be pulling the SATA cable away from the main board and you don't wanna do that. So. Remove all 16 screws and the two doors, and then you'll pry up from the back, and then you'll be able to get all the snaps to release, and you'll be able to get the back of the laptop off. Now you have complete access, just like with the VX15, to pretty much everything, your battery, uh, the fans, the M.2 drive, uh, every, anything you can think of at this point, your wireless card there below the fans. These are the new Aeroblade fans. Uh, they are supposed to be made out of metal. I don't know, I didn't open them up, so I'm not gonna mess with them too much. Uh, you can see uh, that the design now has moved to dual fans on one side instead of uh, one on each side. There are three heat pipes that go from your uh, two that go from your GPU and then turn into three at your CPU and then get funneled into the fans and then exhaust out the back away from the user. On the right hand side, you do have that Micron M.2 drive uh, and you can now access that. Uh, if you wanna replace it with an NVMe enabled one, the, the slot is available to do so. So you can do that, but you're going to have to remove the bottom of the laptop to get to that M.2 drive. Uh, as far as RAM upgrades go and adding a second hard drive, they make it super easy. Uh, but if you wanna remove that uh, main boot drive, you're gonna have to uh, take off the entire bottom. Uh, one thing I did want to, uh, you to notice is that the two speakers on the side here are different from the VX15, is that they fire downward and not towards the user. That does not mean that they are bad speakers by any means. They are good speakers, 
but since they do fire downwards instead of towards you, they are a little softer than what the VX15 can achieve. So that's just a little side note that I wanted to uh, mention to you guys that I did notice during this teardown or, or removing of the bottom of the laptop. This was Luke from Galaxy Tech Review. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Remember to like, and if you haven't subscribed, please do go because that always helps me out. And I'll check you guys out on the next video. Thank you.